need more security researchers in the industry. We need the existing security researchers that that are out there to, to connect with uh, the space, an aerospace community. And it, it isn't enough to have them come in after the fact and to do a security assessment at the end. Uh, we need the researchers to be a part of the development team and include them within the entire life cycle of these systems. Welcome to Space Security Challenge 2020, Hackasat, the final event. As the democratization of space opens up a new frontier for exploration and innovation, we see new cybersecurity vulnerabilities emerging. The Space Security Challenge is designed to inspire the world's top cybersecurity talent to develop the skills necessary to secure this last frontier of cybersecurity, space. Every federally funded lab is chartered with the mission of technology transfer. Technology transfer is all about taking government-owned intellectual property and transferring it to the public domain. The Air Force Research Lab and our charter to perform tech transfer put us in the best position to lead this effort. But first, we had to overcome the monumental task of convincing people that hacking a satellite was actually a good thing to do in the name of improving space security. But we persevered and our mission fueled the creation of what we called the Space Security Challenge 2020 Hackasat. At the heart of it, we needed to create a community where one didn't currently exist. And we wanted to leverage the challenge model because we've learned a lot from DARPA and they've been very successful at creating communities through challenges. And so DARPA created this challenge back in like 2004, bringing together the AI industry, the sensor industry or community, and also the automotive industry to, to formulate a challenge to improve the security of the automotive industry leveraging AI. Now you fast forward 15 years, we have a fully functioning industry of autonomous vehicles. And that's ultimately where we're going with Space Security Challenge Hackasat. We want to build trust and security into our space systems. So we needed to get the attention of the hacker community. And we're not typically, as the Air Force and now Space Force, we're not trying to do outreach to the hacker community. So we had a new unique challenge on our hands. We also needed to get the attention of policymakers and um, the general public and industry. We needed people to care about this because it affects all of us. And then the pandemic hit. And all of our plans to run the finals at DEF CON with the built in audience of tens of thousands of DEF CON tracks shattered. So we pivoted. So we needed to figure out a way to hold finals virtually and still achieve our goal of cultivating a research community. And it became apparent that this pivot to virtual was actually more of an opportunity. It was an opportunity to reach people who wouldn't have normally been able to travel to DEF CON. But there were huge challenges associated with this for both the competitors and the spectators. So in July, we shipped each team leader a flat sat, which came with an air bearing. And what the teams could do is they could put their flat sat on top of the air bearings, and then they could use the attitude control system in the flat sat to be able to rotate the flat sat to kind of emulate what it would be like if they were in space. But with COVID, what we didn't anticipate were the global shipping timelines. Two of our teams didn't get their flat sats until later. In fact, the third place team, Flux Repeat Rocket, didn't even receive their flat sat until the morning of the competition on August 7th. That was a real nail biter. Then there were the spectators. After all, the world is watching now. We needed to be able to give people all over the world a way to feel like they were part of the action. So we built this fully immersive 3D environment for spectators to explore, and watch the competition. We did our best to give it a DEF CON feel so that people really felt like they were still part of that environment that we worked so hard to be part of. And so as part of this environment, we created this extensive library of content and videos. And so all of the content that we created on Hackasat, as well as all of the videos that were created are available on our GitHub page and our YouTube channel, and where you can access that information and continue to learn about hacking, cyber, and space.
The scenario was based around a mock stolen satellite. So once the teams are on the satellite, the remaining challenges had to do with removing the presence of the malicious actor that was on that satellite, orient it so that they could then use the imager to take a photo of the moon that we had set up inside of the facility where the flat sets were all located. The other part of the challenge, the teams were tasked with coming up with a command set that would point an actual satellite at the actual moon. Uh, teams were given a very limited amount of time to accomplish that goal, and one of them was uh, able to successfully take a photo of the moon using that command set. Uh, we're going to answer the question as to which team had their code sent into space tonight. Congrats to Team Poland Can Into Space for submitting uh, not only the best solution overall throughout the whole evaluation period, but the solution that is going to space. We expect the moonshot to happen in a couple of hours at 6.30 Pacific, and that picture will be sent down to Earth at about 1 a.m. Pacific. There will be people who are hacking satellites. And so by having the federal government structure this in a nice, organized, and safe way, we can do it without getting in any trouble, and they can get the results and the understanding that they need from an attacker's perspective. Having the ability to approach something with the mindset of, you know, how could I break this always helps you understand how a system works better. It's something we all as a community have to be thinking about. And the security, the security community wants to be a part of that. They, they would like to be involved with these systems. They would like to secure these systems. They would like to learn more about these systems. Uh, so, so openness and transparency um, and, and getting access to more of these systems going forward. And, and we need this space community, uh, the aerospace community, to be open and available and receptive to that. Um, and that's what we were trying to accomplish with Hackathon, put on a game that, that brought those two communities together and raised that awareness. And I, I think we did a good job of that. Uh, now we hand the ball off uh, maybe to, to the aerospace community to, to take that forward. Last thing, thanks for joining us. The future of space security depends on the work we're doing together.